travel is undoubtedly the safest means of transport. However, air travel is expensive given the cost of constructing terminals, runways, procuring radar and weather equipment, and the high cost of acquiring aircraft. In spite of these, air travel can be considered an investment that is well worth the price, as air travel brings with it a great potential for economic and infrastructural development. In view of this assertion, it is noteworthy that Kwara State has remained one state in Nigeria that is taking advantage of the unique opportunities that air travel and the aviation industry presents. Given its strategic location as a gateway between the northern and southern parts of the country, coupled with ample land for expansion, the Ilori International Airport has all it takes to be developed into Nigeria's aviation hub. The Kwara State Government, having identified the potentials and opportunities for the state, has taken corresponding steps to position the state at the heart of Nigeria's aviation industry, transforming it into a hub for the aviation industry in Nigeria and indeed beyond. With a thriving international airport, the path to achieving the goal of making Kwara State a hub took a giant leap with the construction of a cargo terminal at the airport, which when fully operational will no doubt spark a cargo revolution in Nigeria. The cargo terminal was strategically built to serve as choice destination for cargo products bound for the northern part of the country, as well as export products from northern Nigeria to other parts of Africa. The terminal is a twin-chambered facility with the export and import sections boasting 1,260 cubic meters capacity each and fitted out with a cold room for cold and wet storage of goods. It is noteworthy that the cargo terminal was instrumental to the importation of special breeds of cow herds and other materials by the former Zimbabwe farmers in the process of relocating to Shonga Farm in Kwara State. The sighting of the International Aviation College in the city of Ilori to juxtapose the International Airport and the cargo terminal was yet another strategic step in the direction of making Quara an aviation hub. Up until recently, there was a shortfall in skilled personnel in the Nigerian aviation sector, as the only aviation institute in the nation became grossly inadequate to meet the rising demand in the sector. The International Aviation College was the answer to this dilemma. When we set up International Aviation College, it is designed to serve an international purpose. And the impact will continue to be felt for the next 20, 30, 40 years as we move on. You see, in politics, you have to make a choice of looking at low-hanging fruits that you deceive people with, and then you go away. After that, they forget you. Or you give us programs that will live much more after you. The International Aviation College is designed to live much more after our generation. And it's a program which is designed to give Kwara State a, a kind of prominence, not only in Nigeria, not only in Africa, but globally. You see, we must begin to think big. If you want to be big, you have to think big. And Kwara State has to be big, because we are endowed with human and material resources that should make us big. The International Aviation College is designed to give us a kind of outlook that shows that we are also recognizing the death need of pilots globally. And we are taking advantage of that to begin to train pilots. And these pilots will become internationally recognized. The vision of the visioners and the vision that we've been following of this college is to make it a, a, a manpower resource center whereby we build skills uh, and to tap in, into the hub where state is going to become as an aviation hub. Um, by providing skill manpower, we started as a pilot training. We'll, do, we'll be doing engineering training and all other aviation-related courses. And what we do that is to build the skills and the manpower required for what Kwara State will become, I'm telling you, in the next three, four, five years. 
With increased demand for pilots owing to growth in the sector, the establishment of more aviation training schools in Nigeria and the West African region became imperative to train professionals in various sectors of the aviation industry, including pilots, cabin crew, air traffic controllers and engineers. I chose International Aviation College Learning because it's one of the approved training organizations for aviation training in Nigeria and because I was also referred here by uh, someone in the Air Force, a senior officer in the Air Force. So that is why I chose International Aviation College Learning. Uh, you know, a uh, passion to, to fly aircraft. And at the same time we have new department in FRSU, we call it um, Area Surveillance Department. We cannot do it with vehicle, we cannot do it with bikes, we have to do it with the aircraft. I'm from Kebi State, and uh, you know, the, it's my local government that is sponsoring this program. And the name of that my local government is Coco Basin Local Government in Kebi State. The college boasts of modern state of the art training equipment such as flight simulators, a library, and computer room, amongst other requisite facilities managed by highly qualified and experienced class and flight instructors. Well, um, looking at other aviation schools in Africa, I compare the aircraft they use. We have a Diamond 40 aircraft and Diamond 42 aircraft, which is very good and it's, it's, it's a good global standard aircraft approved for training. And we have simulators, two rooms for simulator training. But the main simulator is for particular training, the training program. Why the other simulator, which we have here, is just to prepare you ahead of a flight. Most times when you have a flight ahead of you, you come here to practice for that particular flight you have. And um, other things, flight instructors are, are well trained, they know, they actually know, they actually give you the best you have. So definitely the facilities are of global standards, the qualities are of global standards, the training is of global standard. Bristol Helicopters Nigeria Limited. Okay, uh, I see International Aviation College Learning in terms of facilities. The facilities here are world class of a global standard. And also in terms of the curriculum, the curriculum is well aligned with uh, the standard curriculum for aviation training, for the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority training. And also in terms of safety, there's a safety culture which we abide with here, which is one of the things that makes me comfortable in Aviation College Learning. We don't judge ourselves, but we knew that uh, what the visioners of this college, the owners of this college put in place, is, is uh, beyond anything you can find anywhere in Nigeria or Sub-Saharan West Africa. That is for sure. Is it equipment? Is it the type of classroom and the type of equipment of the classroom or the standard of our instruction and the standard of our delivery of training? Um, our aircraft, I'll start with our aircraft, is the one of the most modern aircraft in, in the world in terms of trainer aircraft, which is called the Diamond Aircraft. We have the single engine, we have the twin engine. Uh, this aircraft, they are glass cockpit aircraft, whereby they have Garmin 1000, and uh, glass cockpit from zero hours, a student flies in a, a modern aircraft like you find in any modern jet, and so nothing will scare him. So the equipments are there, and uh, those, those are the things that change, uh, uh, put us apart. And where we are located, so, um, Eloran here, is, 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 is a central part of Nigeria, whereby is it peace you are going to talk with? Thank God we have peace, and Nigeria will have peace in general. Uh, is it the weather you are going to talk? We have a good climate weather for flying. Uh, is it the airport, whereby we have the Eloran International Airport, whereby it's second, to the, uh, it's second to the Lagos in terms of the length of runway. It's second to Lagos Airport. In fact, it's an alternative to the, uh, Lagos Airport, whereby it can accommodate 747. And we are not be so busy. So we have the whole place to ourselves. We could fly as much as we could, day and night, 24 hours. And uh, those are the things that, uh, that put us aside. You see, the school was set up by the state government ostensibly to drive it to fruition level and then send out the stakes 
to those who know how to run the business. It is the expertise of the private sector we are combining with the public sector and we create what we call public-private partnership. And that is what is setting up that school. But as a starting point, we inject our funds. We set up the school, we, take, we set it up to a desirable level. When a prospective investor will now come and say, yes, this is good looking. It now looks like a bride I can marry. They can now put their money there. We will now take our money out and the business will run accordingly. At the moment, the college has four diamond aircraft in its fleet with more due for delivery. All right, diamond aircraft is, when it comes to maintenance of diamond aircraft, avionics wise, the, the kind of system we have here is just like that of your computers. Because we have what we know as Garmin, Garmin 1000. This is the latest technology on any airplane, whether Airbus, Boeing, or any big airplanes. So if a pilot is being trained here, he will be able to incorporate into the market easily. Maintaining this aircraft, you have to be well trained before you can maintain our fleet. It's not like a common fleet where you could just finish from your aviation school and you start maintaining. You need to go for type course on this airplane because it is normal. It is a bit bigger than the abnicio thing because the gaming system is new technology and only few uh, training school have it installed on their aircraft. You see, one good thing about uh, the engineers we have here is all aircraft that we fly here have been maintained by our own indigenous engineer. We don't need to take any of our airplane outside for any major job or, or smaller jobs. All of us are well trained on this aircraft, so we do a lot of work on our own engine change, propeller change, airframe overhauls and other things. We do them in-house here in Eloni. Certain places does not have the capacity to maintain their fleet. They have to send it to a, an AMO, that's a pro maintenance organization to maintain the airplanes for them. But we have the capacity to maintain our airplane. That's why we are all trained by the manufacturers of the airplane. We work basically on the engines and the airframe of the aircraft. So it's amazing here and we enjoy doing this work. In life, you just have to be determined and then you decide to pick a challenge. I decided to pick the challenge knowing that aircraft maintenance engineering is not an easy task, but I feel I can do it and with God's grace, I've, I've been able to do it. The pioneer pilots from the college graduated in December 2013, receiving their commercial pilot licenses multi-instrument rating certification and their wings after completing the standard pilot course. More pilots have been graduated since that time. I'll probably say that uh, the Nigerian Air Force, I'll start from the Nigerian Air Force. They have given us students, 25 officers to train. We have graduated 11, which is the first batch, and submitted it to them. They are happy, they are licensed pilot. We have the second batch of 14, that is Nigerian Air Force. We have had Bristol, we have had a relationship with Bristol whereby they bring in students for their foundation training and we have individual Nigerians and some state government sponsoring students. We have, um, we have had a collaboration with NAMA and doing one training or the other. Uh, we are working with the Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Navy has visited us twice. We are working on them to do a foundation training for their personnel and uh, other organizations too that are coming to talk to our state government. The Kwara state government, under the leadership of His Excellency Alaji Abdul Fattah Ahmed, is not sparing any efforts in putting Kwara state on the fore of the aviation industry in Nigeria, as plans are already underway to buffer up existing facilities and expand the capacity of the International Aviation College which is presently at the core of its strategic blueprint for actualizing the Quara Aviation Hub. 45 pilots that have gotten commercial pilot license from inception and we are less than three years in the industry. Our courses average between 14 to 18 months as per the requirement of the curriculum of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. We have had several PPL. PPL is just six months to one year course depending on the weather, depending on how funds are available to you to pay for your training. So we have had uh, over 70 private pilot license holders, including those people who continue to get the commercial pilot license. Then 
uh, we have the SP5 now in the class, and still almost finishing SP5. Uh, we have three or four civilians inside them, plus the Nigerian Air Force, they are 18 in the class. We have SP6 who are flying now. We have the SP7, they are flying. And uh, the newest in that they came in is SP8. And as I told you earlier on, we were starting our flight operation dispatchers course. And we've been talking about it all over the place. In further recognition of the strategic infrastructural development at the Ilori International Airport, the Nigerian Air Force is also taking advantage of the enabling environment to site the Air Force Training School in the state, which is built to take off soon. The International Aviation College, Ilori, enjoys strategic partnerships with private organizations and government institutions such as the Nigerian Air Force, which send their staff and officers to be trained at the college. I believe we have consolidated. We have we not fully consolidated, but we, we equipment-wise and uh, uh, instructional skills and requirements, we have consolidated. So now it's now to start branching into other fields that we could do, and that's, those are the things I told you, the uh, aircraft maintenance engineer, technicians course, flight operations course, cabin crew, and those are the other supporting uh, services apart from flying that you could do. Part of the blueprint for the aviation hub includes making it possible for planes flying the international route to offload passengers at the Ilori International Airport from where passengers can take connecting local flights to their final destinations in other parts of the country. This will no doubt result in a boom in trade as well as the sighting of aviation and other related services opening up shop as a direct result of the aviation hub. If Ilori is a hub, that means things can come in and go out from there. And let's look at it. Let me even look at the cargo. Have you ever gone to Lagos by road and see how many trailers go into Wharf and come out? A trailer from Wharf to Ikeja uh, to where will the tool gate can take four, five, four hours, five hours sometime in Lagos. Is that to go in or come out with goods? If those goods are perishable, what do you think? Not to talk of it has to come from there to Kano, to Sokoto, to Beninkebi, to Mina. But when you have a hop as Quara, the tomato grower in Lokoja or Nyawuri with his onions in Jega, they can bring their ships, I mean their trailers, less distance. The aircraft will be here for export. Fly it out or pick it up and tell me which one is easier for you if you are coming from Sokoto to pick your goods in Lagos or to pick it at cargo terminal in Elori. Why are we called Quarry Central? Lagos is full and accommodate is so full. But if you have this hub as Quarra, a lot of things can happen in aviation. I'm just talking about goods now and exports. Likewise people too. You can make Quarra as a hub to go into other places in Africa and West Africa particularly. But what we are looking at, what I believe that it will help Quara develop and other places to have less time and goods and services is having the cargo terminal in Loring, whereby goods can go into interland faster and better. In making this a reality, the Quara state government under the leadership of Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed is putting in place infrastructure and other facilities needed to achieve this within the next five years. This school is key in into that idea of making the hub of within Quara. Is it we are going to start flight dispatcher course, which is flight operation officers course. They are operation officers whereby they do the clearing uh, assisting the pilot to depart from one aircraft from uh, an aircraft from point A to point B. Now we are going to do a technician course. It's not a license course, but a technician is more like a mechanic who is working under the tutelage and uh, guidance of a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. And we are, the Quara State Government is assisting the youth of Quara and any other Nigerian youth who wants to buy in into this. 
Recently, you must have heard Osho State is going to make a maintenance hangar at their airport. They should come here. We will train their technicians. We will train their youths. They are unemployed to be technicians so that people cannot come and take their jobs. So are you seeing the axis? Are you seeing the, this, the arrow? Because there are limited schools in this country that could do so much. You cannot put the pressure on one school that is that has been there for over 40 years there needs to be diversification and that's why a lot of people are going outside i think the time and the reason why kwara said put this college in place couldn't have been better and couldn't have been the right the better time than now building an aviation hub is a herculean task which requires huge investment in infrastructure and equipment however Kwara State, under the visionary leadership of Alaji Abdul Fattah Ahmed, is taking it in stride. Uh, and uh, people should not be discouraged that, uh, oh, to be a pilot is expensive. We don't have to be. Not all of us can be pilots. Just like now in aviation, we could be specialists, like we are talking about flight operation officers course, which is the flight dispatcher. Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed, whenever you talk to him, what can we do for the youth? How can we assist them? What can you create? What does industry do? And we are there to advise him. And one of these reasons is one I told, to talk to you about the technician course and the flight dispatchers course. A graduate now finished, he's offered maybe 30, 40,000 naira for a job. I guarantee you, if he becomes a flight dispatcher and licensed but an Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, when he finished the training and do the uh, on-the-job training and gets his license, there's a tendency you get between 100 and 150,000 naira as a start-up salary, and that cost is less than eight months. So what are the youth doing? Take advantage. There is no gain saying the fact that there is hardly any other state in Nigeria and indeed the West African sub-region that can lay claim to the institutions, facilities and personnel that Kwara State currently enjoys and boasts of in the aviation sector. I hope to see myself flying for a commercial airline or if possible an helicopter company because I like helicopters. Even my, my colleagues, they know me for that, I like helicopters. Yeah, after my course in International Aviation College alone here, you will find me flying Federal Safety Corps aircraft for area surveillance patrol and the rest, search, and rescue, uh, search and rescue operations. I see myself uh, using the skills, the talent and the safety culture which has been imbibed in me here to move in the labor market and to be able to impact positively as a pilot in airlines and to be able to, in other areas apart from aviation, other areas such as discipline and uh, other cultures which have been imbibed with me here. I also like to use that as a means of being a better person in society. Let me start from Nigerian Air Force, which is a course for the last to graduate. Uh, they have absorbed all their pilots and they have immediately, it's just like water and sponge. They suck them in. You will see a few weeks or a few months ago, you will see it in the newspaper whereby the former chief of air staff was putting wings on their shirt. Immediately, they were calling me, oh, guy, I've been posted to Benin, I've been posted to Kaduna, I'm doing grand school for this type of aircraft. Immediately, because there is a need for them. And if they are not qualified, they will not, the Air Force will not even, they've been monitoring us. Now, that is cost three, I mean cost four. Cost two and uh, one, because of the lull in the aviation, all of them was virtually absorbed. Some of them are in Arik, some of them was Aero, some of them are Bristol helicopters. Uh, some of them with uh, aero helicopters. One of them is in Shell internationally. So they are engaged. With this in place, it is safe to project that Kwara State is well on its way to achieving the status of an aviation hub in Nigeria and the West African sub region. Kwara State, it's good here. <laughs>